Our company today is going to do almost $100 million this year, and we have over 100 people. On Tuesday, we had our leadership meeting. I started the meeting at a 10, and then when I finished the meeting, I was at a 5. I even ended up kind of insulting one person in front of the entire leadership organization. And by the end of the meeting, I, I was like, what am I doing here? Maybe I shouldn't be the CEO of this company. I haven't been the CEO of this business for the past five years, even though I started it 11 years ago. There's been some really shocking and amazing leadership lessons I've learned that I really wanna share with you. Let's dive in. What I've actually realized about some of the leadership stuff is you're actually serving, not leading. A leader doesn't have to be the person at the top. A leader can be anyone throughout the company. One experience that I had recently that was really powerful was our AppSumo branding. So we have a mission and a vision and about statement and all these kind of things. And the team showed a new version of it. With that moment, I, I saw what they presented and I said, hey, I think this can be better. We hire great people. I challenged them a little bit. And literally yesterday, Sarah, Beth, Kellen, and the rest of the branding team uh, came back and blew my mind, which I'm so excited for you to eventually see on the AppSumo.com about page. Now, one story that I learned uh, actually in Israel, which was crazy to say this, is that when Jesus or when a leader leads a flock of sheep, not that anybody at our company are sheep, do they lead from the front or do they lead from the back? You actually lead sheep from the back. And that has been something that's been really surprising because I think we're used to the default of the should leadership, which is like, I'm in front, I have to do all the things, I have to tell them what to do. Most of the time, if you've hired excellent people, stay the F out of their way and just give them some guidelines and suggestions about how they can be in their excellence. Leadership is about paying attention. Now, I think all of you guys have heard that and you'll be like, that, well, that sounds stupid. But what I noticed is for the past three years when I've been doing YouTube and podcasts, if I was in a meeting with our YouTube team, I would be on Instagram, I'd probably be texting someone else, I'd probably be thinking about what's for lunch, I'd be doing all these things except actually the most important thing and paying attention to what I'm really working on. And I don't think you can be successful, period, if you're not focused. Next up, you are not alone. There is a lot of smart people around you. So when I first came into AppSumo, I saw the mission and vision uh, that our branding team was gonna change the company to. And I immediately had like the strong resistance. I was like, ooh wee, that does not feel good to Uncle Noah. And then I was like, I need to go solve it. All right, y'all, I'm gonna come back and tell you what the mission and vision is. So I, I went biking and I'm talking to my buddy Dan from Tropical MBA and I'm like, hey Dan, here's a mission and vision. Like, I think we should like create dream lives and I think we should be this. And he's like, yeah, that sounds good, okay. And then I was like, oh man, I don't know if I like any of these. And then two nights later, I was hanging out with my buddy Ahmed Gupta and I was talking to Ahmed and he's like, well, do you have to do this all yourself? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you have all these smart people that have been hired and they're doing great at AppSumo. Why don't you actually include them in the process? I was like, but I thought a leader is supposed to do everything and I have to come back with some genius idea and I have to do it all. He's like, no, no, not at all. I went back to the branding team and, I, and I actually we, we productively were saying, hey, here's what I liked, here's what I didn't like, can you guys help? And they were like, actually, we want to do this. The why and where we're going is on you. The how and execution, let us do that. And you really should leverage people in your company and people outside of your company to really help make great things happen. If you want more videos from Uncle Noah, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I put out three juicy business videos every single week on topics like leadership and other things to help you on your business journey. I remember years ago, I met with Heaton Shaw. He's one of the advisors to our company, a good friend of mine. I always call him a guardian angel to AppSumo and for me. And I remember one time I asked him what leadership was and what it be, meant to be a CEO. And he said, a great CEO does no work. I was like, dude, shut up. That sounds like a dream, <laughs> right? I didn't understand that until recently. And it sounds like a weird concept to even talk about. When you think about what a CEO or leadership really means, it's that you're really only dealing with the unknown. What does that mean? Think about that. Is that if it's already been figured out or if it's easy to decide, someone can just decide it and do it. You're coming to the CEO or leadership level when it's like, oh, this is something new we actually have to think about. Leaders don't make decisions. Leaders hire the decision makers. We had an issue about how do we actually do bar raisers? So it's something that Amazon does and what a bar raiser is that they help make sure that everyone you're hiring is gonna be better than the average people that you have at your company. And I will tell you, I'm not sure I would get a job at AppSumo today. So the decision there was actually, Noah wants to th keep the hiring consistently and have the bar raised for all the people bringing on. That's my why and my interest. Who is in charge of doing that? Who is gonna divide and conquer and go and make that happen? One surprising responsibility about a leadership is leadership by example. And specifically, I would say focusing on the company. What is the focus? Um, because I've noticed as I came into AppSumo, there's a lot of things going on. My calendar is full. So from 9 a.m. to probably about 6 or 7 p.m., I'm having full ass days. They are tiring and hard and extremely rewarding. If my calendar is packed, what, and everyone at the company can see my calendar, one of our cultural values, sumoisms, is default to sharing. What is that saying? How do I create a calendar for myself and as well as everyone in the company that they're excited to be coming up in the upcoming week? And so in terms of leading by example, I am now being really intentional of saying, let me try to find a calendar that actually works for me and that's sustainable and also shows other people like, 
You don't have to be in meetings all day. And if you are, are these the meetings you really want to be in and own the outcome and own your own time with that. Now, in terms of the focus stuff, there's so many different things to focus, but I want to talk to you about squash. So I've been playing squash. It's kind of like an English game with a little ball. It's like racquetball. Now, what's interesting about squash, and I want to talk about leadership and focus through that, is that the focus of squash is hitting the ball to a place that your opponent can't hit. Now, in a company that your company and everyone's company, including AppSumo, there's so many different focuses and everyone has different things to focus on potentially. And so one of the things that Elon Musk has said and one of the things I really appreciate is how do you line up the vectors? It's like, where are we going? What's the focus of the company? What's the strategy of that? And how much is the business is actually lined up around it? Now, how do you know you're focused? And this is one thing I really love. I think Mitchell on our team does it well, is that you say no to things. But what I mean by that is that if you are in a company and I go to Mitchell and I say, hey, let's do TikTok. Everyone's on TikTok. Let's make TikTok videos. He's like, well, no, what's the focus of our YouTube channel? I'm like, to get to 250,000 subscribers. It's like, is this important? I'm like, no, it's not important, but it's fun and everybody else is doing it. Yes, that was great. And so it doesn't mean you can't do experiments. It doesn't mean you can't try things. But when people are saying no to you within your company or you're saying no to things outside of what you're trying to focus on, that is such a superpower. That will help you accomplish the things you want to be accomplishing. Documentation is key to scaling an organization. But when I first started thinking about coming back into AppSumo and becoming CEO, I saw that we had documented everything. It's literally like, can you imagine that your whole day is documented and you're just like, all right, well, I'm just going to follow this process. And I had a strong resistance and I was like, we should just get rid of all the process and creative people should just be able to be creative and figure it out on their own. You would need to have some organization. So there's documentation so that it can be repeatable by anyone in the organization. Or if you hire new people, you need to have some of that documentation. So for yourself, how can you actually create some of that documentation in your own businesses? Like even basically like, all right, here's how I do my marketing. Here's how I do my customer support. Here's how I like to do my hiring. And what that does, which is really nice, is it gives you a framework for how you're making decisions. And then you could start crafting and readjusting those pieces of the framework. What are some specific things that you can do immediately as well to become a better leader? This is part two of it. So first off, study the best. There's an insane amount of information. HBR articles, McKinsey articles, books out there. There's CEO next door. There's biographies. Andrew Chen told me once, he's our advisor, one of my best friends, is that, Noah, you want to be creative 10 out of 10 things? Why not just pick one thing to be really creative and excellent at and nine out of 10, just find best practices. But we all want to be innovative. We all want to think we're really special about it. Just pick one sliver to be really special. And that alone is going to be amazing. Next up is hiring coaches. I think that if you guys have seen my videos or heard me over the years, I've hired a lot of coaches and a lot of the advice is pretty basic. If you want to make a more deeper dive video about my CEO coach and what I'm learning from it, let me know below in the comments. But it's been really interesting to have different coaches to be able to leverage uh, problems I'm facing or problems I will be facing. We had someone in the company who wasn't doing amazing in their specific role. I was like, let's just fire the person. And I think that's Noah 1.0. And so I did go to one of my coaches and I said, hey, here's a problem I'm facing. And they're like, dude, this is a normal problem. Like everyone goes through this. And I think this is something, especially if when you're starting businesses, you're like, no one ever has faced this problem except me. They have. And this is beautiful. He said, Noah, let's think about what is the best outcome for AppSumo team first? What decision would lead to making sure the company's better off and morale is better with that decision? And he said, if you fired this person immediately, would that be better for the company? And I was like, not at all. What is a way to dignify the person, respect the person and make great decisions with the person and give them a chance to be successful at the company that would make it better for the company? Where can you find support? Where can you find an advisor? Where can you find a mentor? I don't, I don't like that because I feel like sometimes mentors is just like this, like a pipe dream. It's like a silver bullet that doesn't exist, but who can you find around you that maybe can complement some of your weaknesses if it's maybe being a leader, maybe it's being a marketer, maybe it's being more empathetic, whatever that is, and putting those people around yourself. At the company at AppSumo, and one of my preferences is give me the feedback and give me it instantly. Literally feedback is the greatest gift anyone can give you. If someone gives it to you with permission is important because they give it to you unsolicited, that's not great. But if you want to be better in anything, ask for feedback. But it does mean like, oh, huh, this is something that I can actually work on, develop and become a stronger person. Leaders lead. There is no permission that you need to be given. You can do it wherever you are in an organization. There's a lot of surprising things and honestly really challenging things out of being a leader in the AppSumo organization. But I'll say it on the other side of that or even on the same side of that, it has been some of the most rewarding few months of my life and I am looking forward uh, honestly to the growth, the challenges, the discomfort, the experiences that I'm gonna have now and into the far future. I'm also excited to share that with you and see you have your own growth in your own leadership experience. And if you like this video, I think you are gonna love this video right up here. You definitely gotta check this out. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, Uncle Noah wants to send you more videos. I love you and I'll see you out there. Pew, pew.